Welcome to Bob Larson Live. You want to like and share. You want everybody watching, all your friends. Like and share right now because this is going to be an educational evening. You're going to see and hear some things that are very unique, even to us and what we have already done. And as always, subscribe and hit that notification bell. We are in production right now with a number of new videos and teaching that's going to take you to a place that we haven't been before. You need to hit that bell and subscribe so you're one of the first people to know what's going on. And as always, we're going to be taking your chats tonight in a few minutes. Tonight on Bob Larson Live, a lady named Sophie. Sophie grew up in a family involved in witchcraft and Satanism. She herself experimented with voodoo and cast spells. She was a huge fan of Marilyn Manson's satanic music. Now, Leviathan and Lucifer claim that she belongs to them. Marilyn Manson grew up in Ohio. He was known as Brian Warner. He formed a satanic metal band and he named the group after his two heroes. Actress Marilyn Manson, who killed herself, and Charlie Manson, need I say more, the mass serial murderer. He admired Church of Satan founder Anton LaVey, in fact. He claimed that LaVey officially certified him as a minister of the Church of Satan, and he's got the card to show it. One of his most famous songs was Antichrist Superstar. However, the last several weeks, almost a dozen women have come forward telling how Manson sexually and physically abused them. One says Manson had a bedroom he called his rape room. After seven, Rachel, H. Rachel Wood, who was engaged to Manson for eight months, claims that Manson tied her up, beat her, and raped her. Musician Chloe Black said, I thought he was going to kill me. Manson once said of an ex-girlfriend, I have images in my mind of every day smashing her head in with a hammer. His record label, his talent agency have both dropped him. He might even go to prison. One of his biggest former fans is with me as my guest tonight. She grew up in a family steeped in witchcraft and Satanism, including British black magician Aleister Crowley. She wanted to grow up and marry Marilyn Manson. In fact, she referred to him as her spiritual husband. You saw the guy a second ago. Well, okay, she was 13 at the time. At <laughs> 13, we all thought some pretty crazy things. But now she's a student of our International School of Exorcism, and she's moving on into the Advanced Academy, and she wants to be a missionary. But first, we've got to get rid of her demons. That's why she recently contacted me for an encounter. You just couldn't resist that laugh, could you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you think this woman will never get free. There are too many. I know what you think. Too many of us. We have all been here for so long. And there's been so many bad things. Who defies me? <laughs> I demand your name. Jezebel. Jezebel, of course you're Jezebel. Get your eyes open and look at me. Destroy her. To destroy what? Her call. Her call. Okay. How did you get there? Her mother. Well, we're just going to have to get rid of all of you. You can try. <laughs> Just before I get to Sophie, I've got some great chats. And thanks to those of you already who are sharing a gift for our ministry online through your chats. God bless you. We appreciate you so very much. And remember to hit that notification bell 
And if you're not a member of the Members Only channel, let me tell you, it's now a new month. And guess what? We've got some amazing brand new videos to show you. Behind the scenes, Susanna, the wife of a pastor in India who had the cobra snake demon, more in her story. And also at the sword bearer level, curse breaking. This month we teach you how to break the curse of rejection. And then when you move up to the soldier level, well, you also get exorcism explained. This month, a young man that I did an exorcism on who got the demon Leviathan from a girlfriend in witchcraft, and also at the soldier level, exorcism uncut, part two of this woman involved in satanic ritual abuse and sacrifice. And then for the commanders, we just had a great webinar with the commanders on Wednesday night, you get accelerated deliverance training and this month it's on the subject of demonic kingdoms and how they're arranged and also at the highest commander level a brand new video just released a couple of days ago a special i did some years ago on the learning channel on the subject of mind over matter and some of those amazing demonic footage before you get to me and you see me doing the exorcism they show some stuff that is just out of this world in terms of the demonic and the supernatural. All of that when you belong to the Members Only Channel. Quad Runner, every week you are right there. Thank you for the gift of $50. And Diane, God bless you. You're there for us every week. A gift of $49.99. And Colton, who has been on the show before, $9.99. My good friend Adrian thought out down there in Texas. He's a members only. He said, how has your ministry changed in the last year, reaching more people than in person? I got to tell you, Adrian, even though I'm looking forward to getting back to seeing my friends in Texas, hey, Texas has been unleashed. Off come the mask. You guys are going to get real down there. Can't wait to see you. But Adrian, everything has been completely transformed. I mean, tonight is an excellent example of that. And we are actually Actually reaching more people. I did a calculation on it, and I can't remember what the exact number was now. It's been a couple of months ago I did that, but it, it, it's something like a hundred times more people directly every single week than in our live seminars. I love the live seminars. We'll be back to doing some of them again, but the production of videos that we're, we're into now is a mass of knowledge and information. We already have the, the largest inventory of information about spiritual warfare at any place on the planet, and we're increasing it all the more because we've got to do it in these last days. All right, let me see what else we got here. Frida, 20 pounds money. England, <laughs> you must be from England. Thank you so much for that. Colton, back to Colton. He says, can you tell you more about the spirit of Ahab? We hear a lot about Jezebel. What about her wicked other half? Well, let's remember something. Jezebel was the priestess of Baal in the Phoenician kingdom where her father was king. So she was in charge of all the prophets of Baal. And he brought her to Israel and put her on the throne of Israel. And she immediately set out to kill all the prophets of God. That's the kind of guy he, this is. In fact, First Kings says of him, he was more wicked than any king before him. Kayla says, Bob Larson, I have a question. Uh, can you come to my Vampire Diaries, a parody premiere event in Colorado, I'm your biggest fan. I'm not sure exactly what that's all about, but no, I can't. <laughs> I'm not sure that I want to. Sonia, Sonia, down in Georgia. Sonia was on the show a couple of months ago. I just did a behind the scenes with her, and we got a bunch more stuff out of her. Thank you for the gift of $25. Scarlet Extreme says, hey, Bob, out of curiosity, does the person need to be restrained first before the exorcism? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Uh, I always try to make sure I have people around who can grab them, because I've often been assaulted, and I've had some pretty serious cases of assault. Uh, Dr. Bob, my question is, as one who has helped many times and done countless exorcisms, do you experience personal backlash as the result? 
seeing things, strange occurrences, and so on. No, no. I, and if I did, I would ignore it. I just don't pay any attention to any of that. Jeff, Jeff was the winner on our webinar on Monday night at the members only level. Got a new webinar coming up next month. Thank you, and Erica, thank you for the gift of $10. Brianna says, my question is, as one who is whole. Well, that's why I just read that. And uh, Frida, a new member says, Bob, any chance you'll be coming to London later this year? And when you unlock London, I'm going to really seriously consider it. We've wanted to get back to London. I was there mm, about two years ago. Incredible things happened, and I love London because it's such a cosmopolitan place. People come from all over the continent to London, so I love going back there, and I actually got a chance to go to Shakespeare's Theater, sneaked over there one night. I love Shakespeare. And Dave says, uh, do we have the ability to bind up demons for a certain amount of time if we want to? Suppose we want to bind up a demon till the end of the world like the fallen angel in the book of Enoch. You can bind demons for a time, but no. You can't bind them for ultimate judgment. That alone is left to the Lord as an angels. Leon says, Bob, my wife doesn't believe Christians can be possessed, but oppressed. What is the difference? Huge difference, sir. You need to take our international school of exorcism. And let me tell you why. Because we teach the difference. Look. There is no biblical word technically possessed or oppressed. The word is correctly translated, as many of you know, as demonized. However, we do have these variations in the extent to which somebody is demonized. But very often this word oppression is a cop-out for people who don't want to do exorcism. They don't want to confront demons. They just want to do some plight soaking prayer and let people go their way, but it doesn't get out the demons. Man, have I got some great chats, and I'm going to get to more of you in a moment. But to my guest tonight, Sophie. Sophie, thank you so very much. Very happy to have you tonight. And I'm so thrilled that you were willing to be here with us. Uh, I don't know where to start. There is so much that has gone on in your life. But I want to tell you this. I have a surprise for you, Sophie. Are you ready for this? Sure, yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> okay. I am. This is your very own, just personally signed certificate of completion for the International School of Exorcism. Man, Yay! You, you, Thank you, you so much. You I can only through. recommend the school. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You flew through this. How long did you spend on it? I spent days and day and nights and at work. I was I was determined. It's it's like a book you can't stop reading. I just I had to keep going and I, I completed it within about two and a half weeks or a week or so. Wow, yeah. that's a lot. It considered it's a lot of material. Every module has more and more material, and it's it's just amazing. You, I, yeah. I have to ask you, out of everything that was in the thirty courses, what's the one or two things that you liked the most or impressed you the most as something that was going to be helpful to you? I think the biblical uh, foundation is the, the most important to me because I really want to understand what exorcism was like in the apostolic age and what where it came from and how Jesus was an exorcist because many people don't see him that way. And he really was the first exorcist, and he that was his ministry. And people, the Christians in the church today, completely ignore that. And I don't know what they're doing with their life, but yeah, we need to take uh, take him by example and uh, do what he did. So. Well, and I understand, I learned this just a few minutes ago, you now have gone on to the Advanced Academy of Deliverance. Yes, sir. I'm in the soul bonding uh, section right now. Well, that's great. We have two lengthy teachings on the subject of the various aspects of soul bonding. Most people just think about it as soul tie, which is okay, but it gets much, much deeper than that. So you are on your way. Let's talk about you, because I understand from having spent a brief encounter with you and the information that you sent us, what a miracle it is that you're talking to us tonight and you're speaking the way you are and you're in the school and you're in the academy. So oh, glory you, to God. you, you yeah. were raised in a home that was basically Satanist. Your, your mother was in witchcraft, your stepfather was in Satanism, and, and you 
grew up with them doing necromancy and talking about people like Aleister Crowley. What was that like? Um, it, it was a handful for a child. Uh, I can say that. My biological <clears throat> dad, he left my mother when I was born. He was rarely around. And uh, he's not much of a Christian. He, I think he's more like agnostic. And um, yeah, he's an alcoholic. So uh, he was very abusive towards my mother. And I saw dishes fly across the room when I was just three years old. And I, I didn't think I would remember something like that. But it's just images in my head. And um, then when my mother met my stepfather, I thought things would improve, but they, they didn't. You know, you would think as a child, oh, well, he's not hitting my mother. He's not verbally abusive towards her or me, but he's spiritually abusive. And that's something that we do not discuss enough because he, takes, he took me down a road that spiritually destroyed me and set me up for failure. And if it wasn't for God, I, I would definitely be dead today. Now, you come from a background from the former Soviet Union. You were born in the former Soviet Union. And when did you finally leave? So we moved to Germany when I was two years old, when the Soviet Union fell apart. And I grew up in Germany. And then uh, we moved to the United States. Uh, when I was uh, 13, 14 years old. Okay, and, and all this demonic stuff was, was going on. Was it just normalized to you? Is that the way life was? It, that was all I knew. You know, I met my stepdad when I was five. My mother was already in her prime as a witch, and I didn't see her really practice until I was about seven or eight, because she would hide those kinds of things from me for a while, and then I, as I started meeting my stepdad, he was, he still is very morbid. He's still a Satanist. My mother is still a Satanist. She adopted the, 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 uh, the, I would say, I guess now that she's a theistic Satanist, they have different uh, types and he's more like the Levian Satanist. But um, yeah, I grew up with that and there was a lot of turmoil in the home in terms of demons. Now, and you, you told me just before we went on the air, that you were the number one fan of Marilyn Manson when you were 13. He was like your spiritual husband. What was yeah. it about him? Uh, the people who are watching a moment ago, we saw some footage of him performing, and believe me, that's, that's the tame thing we, we felt like we could show you. The rest of it's much worse than that. What was it about him that appealed to you? Was it the darkness you were surrounded with that you were drawn to? So it was definitely the darkness. When you grow up in darkness and uh, the abuse and uh, the morbidity and the, the different the, uh, rituals and just the spell casting and the witchcraft, everything comes in together and the music just resonated with me. He's very rebellious and, and there was no talk of God in a good sense in the home. They were always blaspheming Jesus and I grew up with that and my stepfather never believed in Jesus. So. Uh, yeah, Manson is very obscene, and I, you know, I was exposed to pornographic material when I was five years old. Cool. So, uh, being exposed to that, like he was very rebellious, and uh, the way he spoke of of philosophy and, and and the Machiavellian principles and and how to be a better human that there's no evil there's no good it just depends on the type of person you are and what you consider it to be and if you remember your interview in uh, 1989 with um Zena LaVey and Nicholas Shrek remember you interviewed them and you, and they told you various things like you know there's no good or evil it's just it depends on who you're talking to and it depends on the person and it's just a lot of sick ideologies that didn't sink in with me until much later. So. I, want, I want to thank Ruben. God bless you, Ruben. He's now a new member, a commander of the Members Only Channel. And Thomas is a new member, a sword bearer. Thank you so much. Back to more to the chats in a moment. So there's so much of your life we want to walk through before we pray with you to get the depth of the understanding of it. Uh, astral projection was telekinesis. These types of things were somewhat again normal to you that was part of what was in your home right yeah i mean after school i would just you know our walls were all bloody red painted we had black um decor a real human skull in the living room that they 
got from the grave. Don't ask me the details because they wouldn't tell me. But there was a lot of African witchcraft, just a mask on the wall. And my mother uh, showed me how to do necromancy and pendulums, the, the various pendulum swings, which is really popular in Eastern Europe and uh different spells because she you know she did a lot of bad stuff too well, well, then, and then you had this friend from ghana who introduced you to african witchcraft right she did yeah but and you, we, and I you, didn't and you, do start, and you started doing spells i don't think we, we didn't do any rituals together but she showed me how to read hair so you take a strand of hair and you look at it and it has different textures <clears throat> You know, for everybody, it's every different. But you can read someone's past or future based off of hair, which I never heard of before. I never really got into it. Um, but, uh, you know, because of bullying in school, I really got into witchcraft a lot more. And then I started recruiting people into Satanism. And I literally dressed like Manson at some point. And it's not just about the clothes. That's just superficial. But it's the ideologies you embrace and the path that you take for your life that, you know, that makes you a Satanist and you develop those over time. So out of so. all of this stuff that your family did, mm -hmm. your father, your, your stepfather and your mother did, and that you did, uh, what would you say was the one thing that resonated with you the most in the world of the occult that you felt most drawn toward? There's so much. I mean, it would be hard to pinpoint. Uh, they took me to various, uh, you know, cultic um, uh, places in Germany that, that witches um, tend to uh, visit, especially during Halloween and um, other satanic holidays. And just exposing me to a lot of uh, death metal and, and the occult and having a snake and all these books on Aleister Crowley's Book of the Law and Do What Thou Wilt. And I think it's, it's the ideologies that were ingrained in me to hate God or a God that doesn't exist, that doesn't make sense to me. How can you hate something that doesn't exist? But, you know, I left it at that. But yeah, it's just a lot of it that just really took me down a really bad path. But my mother taught me a lot of witchcraft, so. And, and, and just briefly, what was the circumstance by which you came to know the Lord? Uh, it was a long road. I practiced actively when I was exposed from age nine, um, yeah, for 15 years, I practiced witchcraft myself so many different ways from voodoo to, um, you know, Wiccan. I did all of it. Satan, Satanism, there's a various different um, theist, in theistic uh, Satanism, you got various rituals. Um, but yes, I would say the, you had, you got to hit rock bottom in order to really entertain the idea of, do I need a God? Is he really there? Because why would I go through all that? He never cared. If he exists, he watched me all this time and he never did anything about it. I want to get back but, to you in just a moment. But I've got a couple of chats I want to get to Michelle here. Hi, Michelle. She says, Bobby, have you ever delivered anyone from Morgellons disease? And that's a uh, condition of, of, of chronic itching, crawling sensations, et cetera, and so on. Uh, well, I've never actually delivered anybody from that disease, but I have had numbers of cases where people come to me, and, and oftentimes it's connected with African witchcraft or other forms of it, like Obius, for example, where people experience the same thing. And I'm not sure how much of that is the disease, but in most of these cases, it's a supernatural phenomenon. So they describe things like their skin crawling all over, and uh, they, they, they feel like sometimes there are bugs all over their body, and they feel it in their hair, often on the top of their head. So there's, uh, Michelle, a very different connection between this physical phenomenon and the disease as it's designated and a spiritual phenomenon as well. Leroy says, how do I truly give my life to Christ? Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus, you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's really simple. You must believe. You must believe that he is the son of God who came to earth, who died for our sins on the cross and was resurrected on the third day and now sits at the right hand of the Father. Just those simple truths. He was crucified for you. He rose again from the dead. I could talk a lot about 
everything that's involved in that, but it's simple. Putting your trust, your life in his hands and letting him take over. You're hearing this story of a woman who was way down a dark road to evil. To no fault of her own is how she was raised. I don't know where you're at, Leroy, but what I can tell you is that if right now you would just say, Jesus Christ, take my life. I trust in you as the Son of God. You'll be on your way. And contact us and we'll help you to get there. I have a lot more chats here, but I want to get back to this story. You sent me something. I, I wish everybody was as fastidious as you are. <laughs> it would make my life so much easier. But Sophie, you sent me, in preparation for tonight, a list, 29 demons that you have self-identified. And we're not going to have time to read off all 29 of them, but some of them I found rather interesting. Papa Lega and Mama Brigitte. So when you got into the voodoo thing, did, did you contact Legbu and Mama Brigitte? Yes, I actually used voodoo on Christians at the time when I cursed Christians and I despised Christians, especially the ones who were weak in their faith, didn't know anything about spiritual warfare. And the church is weak, then they're not prepared to fight the enemy and Satanists like myself back in the day. And it's um, it's sad that the enemy is way, way ahead of the church. So, but yeah, I contacted other voodoo priestesses because for certain rituals, you need more than one person. So um, they helped me out with certain rituals. I'm not gonna get into the details of what it entailed. I don't want anybody uh, doing it. But yeah, um, they, they uh, I think they uh, invoked uh, Papa Legba and Mama Brigitte was like the Jezebel of voodoo. And my mother was, she is a Jezebel, big time. Uh, so you also mentioned the, super, uh, the spirit of superstition, which really has a powerful control over Russia and Eastern Europe because everything is, is superstitious. And uh, coming from that part of the world, you know about the Domovoys. The, the little no, spirit, boy, yes. yeah, the spirit creatures and the houses that they, they just take this for normal. They leave food, they leave water, leave things for them they, to make sure that they're well taken care of. So if you the, can't find something, you ask the dumb boy to get it for you. You have to turn the glass to upside down, though. And then the spirit of murder. I found this rather interesting. The Nazis killed your great grandmother's entire family. Whoa. Have you dealt with that at all? I mean, have you confronted that yourself? No. Um, my grandmother was born in 1946. Uh, my great-grandmother was in her 20s at the time, uh, and she saw, she was a nurse uh, in, the, in the Army, and uh, she saw her entire family being shot, just bullet execution. They didn't even make it to the, the concentration camp, which, yeah, um, so I, I'm sure it has left uh, traces of something in our bloodline. Okay, so and, and then is something I had known about you until you sent me this list. You actually converted to Islam in a mosque, and, and you wore the hijab. Yeah, I mean, I was looking for something more, and I, I was always searching. So Christianity, I grew up hating. I didn't, you know, Christians weren't really... Uh, very uh, convincing, I should say. So uh, Islam, I was like, okay, well, I'll give it a try and see what happens. So I wasn't too serious about it. I was like, okay, let me go to the mosque and uh, see how it plays out. I got nothing to lose, you know? I guess I'm going to hell anyway if it happens. Um, so yeah, it didn't work out. It didn't. And Actually, then, I felt something go inside me when I converted to Islam. It was... Uh, yeah, this really weird feeling, yeah. So a couple others, because I can't get to all 29, but I want to ask about a couple of others. You bring up the spirit of Shiva uh, from, from smoking marijuana, and I, I don't know if, if you got educated to that from me or did you educate on your own, because I've written a number of blogs about it, and you can mm. anybody can do research on the Internet that, that Lord Shiva, no, the, big, the big thing is marijuana or ganja. Yes, and uh, I did know I did get it from your research, and as I was doing the research, and you said that Shiva was, you know, the the god of ganja. I was like, which is the marijuana. I was like, oh no, I did that too. Put it down on the list. I was literally <laughs> putting anything down that I committed as a sin, 
just to be sure. Okay, so. and then I also want to ask here about this uh, that this name you get, Roslaka, the Marine Spirit. Uh, Rusalka. Rusalka. Mm. Well, <laughs> that's the best I can mermaid, do with my yeah. Russian. All right. So this is, in Russia is the mermaid marine spirit, the water nymph. What makes you think that thing might be there? Well, uh... For one, in your school, I was reading about Eastern Europe. You were going by geographical locations, what kind of spirits are attached to certain geographical locations, and marine uh, or water spirits were on underneath that. And then I did some more research about, well, what are the signs if someone has like a marine spirit? And, you know, you really kind of obsess with the, the, the whole marine um, environment. Like, if you really um, love the ocean and the beach, that by itself doesn't mean you have that demon. That's not what I'm saying. But uh, I was obsessed with the Little Mermaid. I was playing, uh, role-playing her. I mean, for weeks on end, every day, it was it was getting on my ner on on my parents' nerves. I mean, it was bad. So, it's not. I'm not saying I have it. It's just I wanted to put it down just okay. in case I do. Well, mm -hmm. we're we're gonna go through this in a moment. Uh, yeah. Sedia, I don't know how I've got that name pronounced right. Sounds Indian. Uh, thank you so much. Or Middle Eastern, uh, the gift of four ninety nine. Hi, Mr. Larson. Can you talk about marijuana? We just did. Is it a sin? Well, I've never heard you comment it. Just did. Young people need clarity. No weed, no pot. I don't care if it's legal. It doesn't make it right. It is the gateway demon door that you open when you smoke weed. And if you don't believe what I'm saying or what this lady is saying, I challenge you, Google marijuana and the Hindu gods and see what you come up with. Don't take my word for it. Check Wikipedia. They'll tell you. Kelly says, you ever coming to San Antonio, Texas? I'm, I'm going to come somewhere soon once we get this COVID thing behind us, and I'd love to come to San Antonio. I've been there, but I've never been there for a seminar. Jeremy says, what's the toughest demon you ever faced? Well, I don't know that I can name you a particular demon, but I can tell you, and I guess we'll find this interesting tonight. I used to say to people, Sophie, that the toughest demons I deal with are African demons. And then I started going to Russia and Eastern Europe on a regular basis. And now I will tell you that Russian demons are the toughest demons that I deal with. And stubborn. They're very yeah. stubborn. Uh, Frida says, how can you get a deliverance for someone that doesn't want it? Because they're so spiritually affected by curses and strongholds. Well, you can't. People have to want it. I don't care what the situation is. And you can see how well motivated Sophie is here tonight. This is what gets you free. Susanna in Canada, a $50 gift. Thank you so much, Susanna. She's one of our very special people in Alberta. Frank, Frank has gone through our school. Frank has gotten exorcism, so has his wife. And uh, they're very special people. They've actually uh, been with us for encounters. And I want to just refer to you, Frank. It says, can an altar manifested will or does it need a trigger? Uh, either way, a personality alter, a dissociative identity disorder can come out on its own in certain circumstances or it can be triggered by something. My dear friend, Elaine, God bless you. My Eritrean friend in L.A., what can I say? Longtime friend of this ministry, a gift of $300, Aleem. Thank you so very much. More chess I need to get to, but I've got a list. I've been checking it twice, and there's a lot to deal with here. But first— And I'd like so to add something, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, my mother, actually, she uh, taught me how to manipulate men and other people to get what I want, especially <clears throat> sexually, you know, like provocatively. I was 12 years old and she was already showing me what to do, 12. how to act and be a Jezebel at age 12. And it worked. People were scared of me in school. Nobody bullied me anymore. But um, yeah, so I just, um, I've been, somebody asked in the chat, I've been actually saved already since 2014. So I am a Christian now. 
but I just got to get those demons out. And I've been experiencing a lot of spiritual warfare and demonic attacks for about three years straight, just about every night. You mentioned astral projection. I involuntarily leave my body. And uh, when first time it happened, I watched myself sleep. I thought I died. Um, I, I, I wasn't sure what was going on, but I heard myself breathe and my chest was rising up and down as you know, as you're breathing. So I knew I wasn't dead, but uh, I saw a demon in my room and it was ugly. And um, yeah, it's just levitation, just all kinds okay, of stuff. Okay, we, we, we need to get yeah, our members fine. only, soldiers, sword bearers, and commanders ready. Get your emojis ready. Say, Bob, why do you do that? Because in the spirit realm, as people out there are exercising their faith and the emojis, it's, it's like when I pick up my cross in the physical realm to face a demon, in the virtual realm, you're using those special emojis that you have to indicate an expression of your faith. Yes, it's in the abstract, but it's very real to the forces of darkness. So I want you in the world's largest live streaming prayer audience to get yourself ready. I want to lead you, Sophie, in some prayers connected to what we said tonight. I've already met with you virtually. We encountered several spirits, but in particular, Jezebel, Leviathan, and Lucifer. And tonight, we're going to confront them. Now, they're arrogant, they're self-confident, they've had you for a long time. You were there, theirs from the beginning. But it's apparent to anybody who has watched you tonight, you're strong in the faith. And I'm so thrilled you've been through the school, now you're going through the Advanced Academy. So you've got a knowledge base to fight back. However, we know that the battle is the Lord's and that without his supernatural intervention, nothing happens. I'm a human instrument. All I can do is use the skills God's given me and the anointing he's placed upon me and have that come in agreement with your faith so that together we can fight this fight as we have the faith of others. So I want to reach out and anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I'd like you to please keep your eyes straight ahead and your eyes open so I can see you. I want you to say this prayer. Whatever on this list needs confronting. Whatever on this list needs confronting. I do that now. I do that now. In the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the Holy Spirit. If all of these are in me. If all of these are in me. I demand that they leave. I demand that they leave. If there are some not on this list. If there are some that are not on this list. They must go. They must go. There are so many curses in my life. There are so many curses in my life. I've tried to break every one possible. I tried every one possible. I tried to break every one possible. Whatever hasn't been broken. Whatever hasn't been broken. By faith. By faith. I declare victory over it now. You just don't like what she's saying, do you? I declare victory over them now. I want to say something to you, demons. This woman does not belong to you. Her spirit belongs to Christ. You have a piece of her soul. I hope you all enjoyed my school of exorcism. It was amusing. Oh, you're really going to enjoy the Advanced Academy. No, I doubt that it was amusing. I think it was torturous. Shut up. I strike you with the judgment of Christ. You do not 
revile the man of God. You understand me? This woman belongs to Christ. You're intruders. And you're mostly there because of the bloodline. She didn't ask for you. She didn't want you. Yes, she later opened the door to you. But that was after you'd already possessed her and deceived her. Are there any of you that she wants? Hmm? Can anybody say she wants me? No. Yes. Who? Occult. What? Occult. Occult? The occult in general? No, she doesn't want it. No, no. You're kidding I yourself. I want it. No, you're believing your own lies. I make her want it. You can't make her want anything. Who says I make her want it? Who says that? Jezebel. I'd know <laughs> that look anywhere. But you're just the face of this kingdom. You're not the ruler. I've already faced Leviathan and Lucifer. But what I want to know is who's the strongest of all in these kingdoms other than the three of you. What of all these things we've talked about tonight holds her in the most bondage? I demand to know. I command you to tell me, out of all of these things, what holds her in the most bondage now? Answer me. Leviathan. And why Leviathan? Why him? Because of witchcraft. Let's be specific. What witchcraft? The necromancy, the pendulum, the curses, the spells, the voodoo, Aleister Crowley, Marilyn Manson, Which was the worst? Answer me. I command you by Christ. In agreement with all those who watch now, which was the worst? I demand an answer by the blood of Jesus, by the power of the resurrection, by whose heel you were crushed. Out of all of this, is there anything in particular that has the strongest hold? Her mother opened the door with necromancy. Okay. She's renounced that. I'm sure that was right at the top of her list. Who did her mother call forth? Hmm? Her dead father. A dead father? Her biological father? Yes. Why? He died when she was 15. And that's when she called forth by necromancy? Why was that so crucial? Sophie, I see you coming back. Do you remember this? Were you there? Were you a participant? Or did your mother do this separately from you? Yeah, no, uh, we were in the living room. I was about 10 or 9 or 10. And my mother, uh, she was about my age now, in her 30s. And um, uh, she called her dead father, because uh, he died when she was a teenager. I never met the man. So it wasn't your father, it was her father? Her father. Her father that she called up, and what was significant about that? Was he also into witchcraft? 
No, he was a well-known uh, writer and director in our country. So. Really? Why would you think this is so significant? Do you have any idea? I don't know. Well, very often in situations like this, you could have a list of a hundred things that are demonic in the world of the occult, but there's something that the devil has most used. I want you to say, if this demon is telling the truth. If this demon is telling the truth. I didn't conduct that seance. I didn't conduct that seance. My mother did. My mother did. So I will not be held accountable for it. I will not be held accountable for it. But I do demand to know. But I do demand to know. Why out of all of these things. Why out of all of these things. Satan says it's the most significant. Satan says it's the most significant. But the sword of the spirit, according to Hebrews 4.12, I divide soul and spirit. I separate this woman's spirit to that part of her soul where you are, Jezebel, and I demand you to tell me, why is this significant? It's just what you chose as your power base? Why was it significant? Answer me, I command you to tell me by the blood of Christ. I'm not telling you anything. I command you in agreement, in prayer with thousands of people all over the world who reach out in faith right now, agreeing together with me, you tell us, why is this significant if it is? Are you lying? Is this a false lead? If it is important, why is this important? Answer me, why? Was there something about him and his bloodline? There must be. What does his bloodline go back to? That was activated when she called him forth. Answer me. I don't know. Jezebel. Jezebel. You do know. I command you to answer me. What was it? About her father, her mother's father, the grandfather. What was it about him? I guess she just wanted to talk to him. Or so she thought. <laughs> she wasn't talking to him, was she? No. Who was she talking to? That's the key. Who was she really talking to? One of us. Which one? Which one? I'll let you find out. You tell me, I command you by the power of Christ, by all that is holy and good, by the power of Jesus of Nazareth, born of a virgin, crucified for sin, risen again from the dead at the right hand of the Father, and coming again triumphant in glory. You tell me. Which one of you did she talk to? Answer me. Me. Well, who are you? Who are you? Jezebel. So it isn't just that you're there through like all these sexual things that were described earlier. It's because an agreement was made with the king of darkness by specifically calling you up. And that gave it more force and power. Well, then Lucifer and Leviathan are going to be held accountable to your declarations. And I take a threefold cord from Ecclesiastes 4.12, and I bind Lucifer and Leviathan to you and the others on the list. Fuck you. I smite you with the cross of Christ. I smite you with judgment. <laughs> you will suffer for trifling with a man of God. This woman doesn't want you. 
She wants to be a missionary. She wants God to use her for his kingdom and glory. And you're not going to get in the way, Jezebel. So all the spirits of voodoo, Brigitte, Ligba, all the spirits of black magic, all the Crowley spirits, all the Manson spirits, all of them are bound to you. She doesn't want any of you. Do you have legal authority, Jezebel? Do you have legal authority? No. Surely you were looking over her shoulder when she studied the school of exorcism, and you know that if you have no legal authority, there is no standing for you to be there, and you must leave. I'm not going anywhere. Is that what you say? Or is that what Christ says? And is his duly authorized agent coming in the might of his name, you will do what I say. Look at me, Jezebel. Get back up here and face me. Oh, my God. Oh, Jezebel's got to run and hide for a moment. Retreat to her corner of the ring. Not going to work. I just saw you turn that cross upside down. Well, I didn't, but you saw it in your mind. Yeah. Okay. All right, what they're trying to do now is evade, jump away, get out of the line of fire. Let's not let them do it. I want you to say, I assert my will and right through Christ. I assert my will and right through Christ. Through the power of his name. To the power of his name. And the authority he has given me. And the authority he has given me. I will not serve Jezebel. I will not serve Jezebel. And I renounce the seance and necromancy of my mother. And I renounce the seance and necromancy of my mother. The curse is broken. The curse is broken. Along with all these other curses. Come on. I want Along Sophie to see it. Along with all these other curses, say it. Along with these other curses. I will fulfill my calling. I will fulfill my calling. I will achieve my destiny. I will achieve my destiny. All of this evil cannot stop me. All of this evil cannot... Cannot stop me. Cannot... Cannot stop me. Christ conquered this evil in the wilderness. Christ conquered this evil in the wilderness. When he faced Satan himself. When he faced Satan himself. Jesus won. She, Jesus, Jesus won. won. Get up, Jezebel. Say, I, Jezebel. Fuck you in that cross. I strike you with the judgment of Christ. I strike you again and again. Lord, send your mighty angels now. Smite this thing over and over and over until it yields. These are Russian demons. They're strong demons. I've dealt with them before. Some of you folks have heard me talk about going to Russia and Ukraine and Eastern Europe, what I deal with when I'm over there. This is the type of thing we deal with all the time over there. So I understand this. I've steered this down many times through Jesus. Say, I, Jezebel. Get up and face me now and say, I, Jezebel. I, Jezebel. Obey the word of God. Say it. Obey the word of God. Come on, members, only get those emojis going. Obey the word of God. <laughs> Say it, Jezebel. Say, Ob the hell I am. <laughs> Say, obey the word of God. Say it. Say it. Oh, no. Oh, oh this is no laughing matter. <laughs>
That's a Y'all Christians are a joke. <laughs> I strike you with the word of God, the sword of the spirit, I pierce you with it. Say, I obey the word of God. Say it, Jezebel. Say, I obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. Wait a minute. What was your mother's name? Use a pseudonym if you want to. The demons will know who I'm referring to. What's Leanna. her name? Huh? Leanna. Leanna? Leanna. Leanna? I separate Sophie from Leanna. You look at me. What kind of a mother are you? I will tell you a deceived one. Oh, you can be as cock as you want to, Leanna. Go ahead. Make my day. But let me tell you, Something terrible happened in your life that wounded you so deeply it made you embittered and hateful toward God. And even now you've stepped into the middle of this battle to shield the demons so your daughter doesn't get free because you're jealous of the hope she has found in Christ and the peace she has found with Jesus. You want it desperately, you don't know how to get it, you only know evil. You're the one who called up Jezebel and you're the one getting in the way right now, but I want you to know God's grace and mercy, Leanna, is extended towards you. What God? What God? The one and only true God. Why don't you get real and tell me what made you so hateful and bitter toward God? Tell me the truth. Something happened. Something happened in your life. Something happened in your childhood. And it's been driving your hate toward the devil. Maybe you cried out to God and whatever it was didn't stop. Maybe you prayed to him for help and it didn't seem like an answer came. You're not the first person who's been down that road. And I don't know all the details and I can't explain to you necessarily why it happened. I only know that the crossroads we're at now can make the difference between heaven and hell for you. It's already been decided for your daughter. She's going to heaven no matter what. But for you, Liana, this is your chance to turn from your witchcraft. Let me ask you this question. How would I even have known to suddenly speak to you and ask the name of her mother? How could I possibly know to do that? Except by him showing me. I doubt there's anybody in this massive audience who caught it. But the Holy Spirit showed me because he loves you. He wants your daughter free and he wants you to have hope. Please, Liana. Jesus Christ died for you too. Give him your hate, give him your bitterness, give him your anger. He can handle it. And just tell him how you honestly feel. I'm pissed off at God. His what? I'm pissed off at God. I didn't understand you. Say it again. I said I'm pissed off at God. Well, you are not the first one. There have been many millions before you. And some have ended up in hell with Satan. They're suffering in eternal torment tonight. Others made a turn, and they let God be God, 
and they didn't try to play God and figure out the ways of the Almighty. The Scripture says His ways are not our ways. But it also says, as high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is His mercy toward those who fear Him. This is your chance, Leona. Choose. Will it be the devil or Jesus? He didn't save my dad when I needed him. Didn't save your dad from Mother what? The demon. He didn't save your dad from what? Cancer. You know, we could have a long discussion about this, and those are fair questions to ask. But right now, it's your daughter, and her life is who is at stake. I appeal to the compassion of a mother. As much as you've tried to deaden it, and as bitterly jealous as you are of how your daughter's life has turned out, which is so much better than yours, put it aside. Do it now, Liana. All you have to do is say, help me, God. Help my unbelief. Now listen to me, Alana. Here's the deal. If you don't turn to God, I'm going to send you to God to be judged, but you're not going to stay there and interfere. So I'm going to send you away no matter what. I'd rather you go to God in peace. But I will not allow you to interfere with the process of your daughter's deliverance. Look at me, Liana. Choose, what will it be? It's been the devil your whole life. This is your time to choose Christ. What can he offer me? Eternal life. Peace. You certainly don't have it now. What do you got to lose? I'm just angry. I know you are. And I'm not going to tell you all the anger will go away instantly, but I can tell you that he is the healer of broken hearts, and he will come to you and begin to mend the pain where that anger is. All you have to do is say, God, I don't understand why my father died. I prayed. It didn't seem like you heard. And so in my anger, I turned to the devil with full force. God was never there for me. We're not going to keep debating this. Make your choice. God or the devil. God. Okay, God. Say, God help me. God help me. Help my bitterness. Help my bitterness. E even my hatred for you. Even my hatred for you. And forgive me of all the evil things I've done. Forgive me for all the evil things I've done. All the witchcraft. All the witchcraft. All the blasphemies. All the blasphemies. Take me to be with you. Take me to be with you. You know who's the first person who saw Jesus rise again from the dead? A woman out of whom Jesus had cast seven demons. Mary Magdalene. Hey. Yeah. Lana, we'll talk again, but I want you to close your eyes. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come now. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come now. Take me to the presence of Christ. Take me to the presence of Christ. And put my soul at peace. And put my soul at peace. 
Go now. Close your eyes, Leona, and just go. By the sword of the Spirit, I cut you off from these demons. Jezebel, get up and face me. Get up and face me, Jezebel! I can't see you. Well, we've got a technical issue now. <laughs> Guess we'll have to cut it short. <laughs> Did you mess with something? I didn't. Or are you just going to take credit for it? Well, I can see you, Jezebel. And you know what I look like. And you know I hold this cross in my hands. So therefore, you are accountable to it. Just imagine me in your mind, yeah. Jezebel. Go ahead. You've seen me so many times. I've stared you down countless occasions. I don't think you need an actual image of me. You know it well. Say, I, Jezebel. Oh, I, Jezebel. Bind myself. Bind myself. To the kingdom of witchcraft. To the kingdom of witchcraft. And all the spirits. And all the spirits. Under my authority. Under my authority. And I speak for Lucifer and Leviathan. No, oh, they're not coming. I speak for Lucifer and Leviathan. They're staying. They're staying. No. <laughs> I speak for Lucifer and Leviathan. We are as one kingdom. No. We lift every curse on this. <laughs> uh, this woman. Of God. We release her destiny. And <laughs> you're annoying me. <sighs> and every curse on future generations. We receive God's judgment. God's judgment. We all say it. We all. Fuck you, man. Say we all. Get up, Jezebel. Get up and face me. Take your hands from your face. You can see me in the spirit realm. Say, we all. We all. Go. Go. Now. 
now to to the 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 pit <laughs> Come on, members only, get those emojis ready. Say pit. Say pit. Not saying it. I command you by the authority of Christ. You can't do nothing. He said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. All power in heaven and earth is given to us through Jesus Christ. Say pit. No. I command you to say pit. <laughs> you have no choice. I command it by the blood of Christ. Say pit. Say pit. Say it. Say pit. Oh, you're so amusing. I'm not saying it. I command you to say it. I command you to say pit. All around the world, people are praying, and they are in agreement with me now. And they're all saying the same thing. Pit, 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 pit. Say it. Say it. I command you by the power of Christ, say pit. Holy, holy angels of God, strike this evil spirit, this foul denizen of darkness. Say pit. Say it. Say it. Say it. I command you. I strike you. For that blasphemy. I own her. You do not own her. Christ owns her, and you've already surrendered by getting to the point of the word pit. You are now useless to Lucifer. He will cast you aside. There is nothing left for you. You're done. You've already been defeated. We simply are going to put it on the dotted line. Say pit. Say it, pit. Right now, there's a little bit of Sophie going to come through, and she's going to assert her will against you, and she is going to force you to say the word pit. But you're going to say it, Jezebel. Say it, pit. Pit. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. Go now in the name of Christ. Go to judgment. Go to the pit of hell. Go to the abyss. Come out. Come out. Come out. Commanders, soldiers, and sword bearers, we did it by the power of Jesus and faith in him. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for standing with us. God bless you. Well, she's refreshing herself there. Kayla, thank you for that gift of 99 cents. And then 499. And as always, Epic Ava, thank you for your gift of 49.99. Many blessings to you. Come to us, Sophie. I speak the peace of God, the presence of Christ, the comfort of the Holy Spirit to be upon you and to fill you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, I know that, Sophie, you can't see me right now, but I can see you and everybody else can you. see you. I can see you. You can see me now. Yeah. The image came back. I've been seeing you. Well, how was it they said they couldn't see me? For a little while. but uh, Just for a little bit. Okay. All right. She said, damn, she didn't like that. <laughs> I feel 
hot. <sighs> You're going to feel a lot of things with the battle that you've been through. All right? Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Most of all, who did this for you? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want to assure you we're, we're going to be there for you. And uh, we're going to be talking again real soon. <clears throat> this was an enormous victory. And just rejoice in it. Sometimes people go through this battle and it is so exhausting, so strenuous, they forget to rejoice in the Lord and thank Him for what He's done because they've just been run over by a truck. Okay? Yeah, I'm tired. I know you're tired. And we'll talk again when you're feeling a little better, all right? But let's just give all the glory to Jesus and thank Him and thank the prayers of so many people who by faith have joined together, all right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Dr. Bob Larson. Thank everybody in the chat and who's watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We're going to be back in touch with you. You know, I have so many great chats out there. I, uh, I can't get to them. I just do want to thank all those of you who've supported for, prayed for this ministry and who stood with us during this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Subscribe. Tell everybody you know about what happened tonight. Get them to look at in the archives. Thank you for being a blessing and providing the resources for this ministry to reach out in this way. And never forget, you too, no matter what you've done, no matter what your situation, through Jesus Christ, can get free, stay free, and live free. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. For the latest information regarding ministry outreaches, go to boblarson.org or call 303-980-1511.